Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Tonight we're gonna play around a little bit and just try some new tech out. I was really kind of looking forward to trying out this little Bluetooth dongle for the Mantis G2. This is my second one of these ESCs. This is gonna go into a 78 inch Extreme Flight Extra NG. And that plane is in the process of getting assembled pretty soon. We're gonna get started on that very, very soon. And this is the ESC that's gonna go in there. And they have this little Bluetooth dongle. And the thing about this that I like is that Bluetooth, when you get into these bigger planes, the bigger motors, it's not always obvious exactly what the setting should be. And I thought, you know, it'd actually be kind of nice to be able to plug this Bluetooth module in and then affix it to the airframe so it doesn't, you know, flop around. And then if I saw something I didn't like on the plane, I could just get it on the ground, get my phone out, make a parameter change and go fly again. So I kind of think that's a really neat idea and this little module lets us do that. But before we get into the, you know, the how-to, let's cover, let's just give a little detail here. Uh, I'll show you the specifications first and where I got it. The links are in the description. They're not affiliate links, so these are just straight up. I, w I got this uh, ESC at Altitude Hobby. They are in a couple of other places, but a lot of them are out of stock right now. So uh, Altitude Hobby has them. This is a fairly, oops, fairly new lineup, this Mantis G2. It is a 32-bit ESC. In my case, this one's an opto. I, I wanted, I opted for an opto ESC, which means no onboard BEC. And it's 32 bits, 124 bucks, which if you price ESCs in this uh, capacity, you know, that current range, that's a pretty decent price. It's, it's reasonable, very affordable, very approachable. And um, let's see the uh, Bluetooth module, another $24, but... Keep in mind, you don't have to leave that in the plane permanently. So, you know, you put it in the plane, set your plane up the way you want. Once, you, once you're happy with your ESC configuration, then you can take it out and put it in your stash. And when you get another, you know, cause to build another one, you can put it in there again. So 25 bucks for that. And that's it. Now, that's it for the pricing and where I got it. I'll give you a couple of specifications that we can take a look at as well. The current on this particular ESC, 130 amps, burst current up to 150. This one is good for 14S, so I'll be using a 12S system on this one, so two 6S batteries in series. It's 200 grams in weight, no S-Spec on this one, no BEC of any kind on this one. It is an Opto ESC. The CPU frequency, 96 megahertz, dimensions 80 by 45 by 45 and the power wires are 10 gauge and the connector type. I want to call this one out because in most of our ESCs and motors, you generally get some kind of connector. This one doesn't come with anything. You don't get a, a battery connector. I soldered, soldered, because I had a grammar cop correct me. I soldered my XT90 on there and I have to get some bullets because I, I, didn't, I don't have any six and a half millimeter bullets, so I ordered some. So I just wanted to call that out. No bullets, no connectors of any kind in this one. So you're on your own for connectors. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's go back to this one. So just pointing that out. And then it's programmable via the transmitter, so it does do the stick configurations. They do sell a program card for this one, and of course, what I'm gonna show you tonight is the Android app configuration, okay? So that's everything you need to know about the ESC. Now let's get into it. The box, there's nothing really to see in the box, so we'll get rid of that. And out of the box, again, I installed or soldered on my XT90, and it does give you this little connector, you'll notice that this is an Opto ESC, so there's no power coming on that uh, red or black, right? That You'll get the ground loop and signal and that's it. The yellow wire is for reversing. We'll cover that during the configuration bit. So this one does do reversing. So if you're using it for say an EDF, or if you've got a big plane, you wanna slow it down on the runway, you can use that and configure it for what they call SMR or reversing. And then on the back side, this is where we're gonna plug in and you have the fan that's already installed. It came installed out of the box. I believe it did. Maybe I stuck it on there. I don't remember, but in any event, it's just two screws. No big deal to screw that on. And then the power wire for the fan right here. So you have ground is inboard and hot is outboard. Now for the configuration testing that we're going to do, we're going to disconnect the fan. Now, if you're flying, 
There are some tricks you could do with wires. If you want to put a little jumper lead in here, you can, while you're flying, you can disconnect the power leads, the jumper from the red and red and black on the USB dongle or the, uh, sorry, not USB, the Bluetooth dongle and plug in your fan if you need to. Right now we're in the winter time, so it's fine if I go out and fly it around for a little while with no fan. I'm sure it'll be fine for a flight or two. Uh, but if you're really hot outside, you might want to think about that. You know, just uh, I actually had a little setup earlier with uh, four wires coming off, and then you can just stick stick the, stick these in there. And then when you're ready to use your fan, you can disconnect the power from your from your Bluetooth dongle and connect your fan. But anyway, all we're gonna do is plug this one in. Remember, I said ground is inboard, so right there, that's where it goes. So we slide that guy in there, get that one plugged in. And I'm going to make sure I have separation on my motor leads. And I also want to make sure you guys can see the Bluetooth module. So I'm just going to try and get the wires to cooperate with me so you can see it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just take a battery and plug it in. This is a 6L5000. I'm just going to plug this guy in. And you won't really see anything happen because uh, it just nothing happens. We've unplugged the fan. If I had the fan plugged in, you'd see that go. But the one thing that it got me when I first started fiddling with this, when I first plugged it in, is right there, there is a little LED, and I fully expected that to blink or something. It doesn't do anything until you get a Bluetooth connection. All right, so next we're going to get the phone, and I've already installed the app. It's really easy to find the app. It's ZTW. Just search for ZTW. There's only like two of them. So this is an iPhone. So we have the air. We're going to click on air or boat ESC. And then we're going to hit this little connect button. And here's another one that kind of got me. This little window of Bluetooth devices slides. <laughs> it's, when I first turned it on, I'm like, well, it's not the TY. It's not my bad air. It's not my MacBook. And I don't even know what that is. But it's not that uh, because it stayed when I unplugged the unit. So I was like, what the heck? It's not showing up. I kept turning the Bluetooth on and off. Nothing helped. But this window, I had to do a lifeline call out to my boy Rob on Discord. And he's like, uh, yeah, try scrolling that list. And when you scroll the list, there you go. You can see what happens. You go, you go down and you're going to look for one that says BLE. It starts with BLE something. There it is. BLE 7A6D. And you just hit connect. There's no pairing required per se. You don't have to put in any codes or anything like that. And that's it. You're connected. Now what we'll do is I'll give you a look at the configuration options. So I'm going to click this little button for parameters and you'll see it load up the list of things you can change. And here we go. There's the, I'll, I'm going to bring up a list and we'll talk through these, but there's the SMR function, the break function. So if you want to set the break on, you just click on the little box and it shows up a little scroll list down here at the bottom. You can say, well, I want it to be a mid break or hard break. And then you click, click the button and it sets it for hard break. And then you just keep doing that for all your settings. So pick your motor timing, your rotation. One nice thing, if you are setting up your model and your motor's backwards and you already have your motor leads connected and tucked away, or if you have them heat shrink like I do, then you can come in here and just flip your motor rotation without having to change your leads. So that's kind of a nice little feature. So counterclockwise. And again, you can do all this with the stick menu as well. If you don't mind tinkering with that kind of thing, I hate it. So this is to me much better. I can do it. It's not like I'm like, I'm not like a stick programming idiot. I can do it. It's just annoying because I hate waiting for all the things and all the tones and making sure I get it right every time. And then what always bothers me about stick programming is if I mess something up, then I got to go back and look at the menu and figure out what I did. And it's kind of a pain in the neck. Okay, we've got low voltage cutoff, so if you can, if you want to set that. One thing that I thought was kind of odd, they go from 3.0 to 3.2 to 3.4. I don't know why. What, what, is it hard to program in extra steps? Like, why can't we have 3.3? Like, that's where I would want it. <laughs> I don't know why they do that, man. Developers, come on, you know, give us... Right. Look, we don't need options up here. No one's going to do a cutoff at 3.8, right? No one's going to do that. And probably, hopefully, no one's going to do a cutoff at 3.6. So for Pete's sake, give us 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 34, 35. Right? Come on. That's us. Come on. Do your homework, guys. I don't understand that one. Anyway, uh, BEC voltage. If you have an ESC with a BEC, you could set the output voltage here. In my case, this is an opto, so I don't. It doesn't matter what I set that to. It's not going to do anything. And then there's a couple of others. So you get the idea. Once you're happy with all your changes, I'm going to change my brake back down 
and I'm going to set my, my brake to off because I don't want to brake on. And then after you're done, you hit save and you see the little icon that pops up and says save and that's it. There you go. Your parameters are now saved on your ESC. Isn't that cool? And there's also an option down here to reset to factory, which I think is also very cool. So we'll hit the home button. And the next thing I'm going to show you is the data screen, which I thought was also kind of novel. It'll give you an idea. You can look and see what kind of voltage you've got on your battery. Uh, if you, you know, before you take off, you want to calibrate your sensor. If you run in VBAT, for example, you can calibrate and make sure that your uh, VBAT sensor is aligned with what your ESC believes to be true. It shows what your current, I don't know why it's like 62 amps for current. That doesn't make any sense at all but 62 amps, that looks like a mistake. And we have throttle, output throttle, RPM. I don't want to click, click the eye. Number of stator pulls and the main mo rotor ratio. So I guess if you have a helicopter. And then use power, ESC temperature, motor temperature. So there you go, some statistics. And then the other thing you can do is there's a option to upload firmware. I looked on the website, there is no firmware available. I guess you have to put it on the phone and then share that location with the app. And then you can click on firmware update and it should see the firmware here, but there was no firmware for me to flash. So I couldn't, I can't show you how that one works because there's no firmware for me to do it. But you can flash your firmware on your ESC with this application if they put one, a firmware update out. And then after that, you've got settings, which is really nothing more than language, English or Chinese. That's it. That's all you get in the settings. So that's it. That's the app. Come on. We're going to do English and we'll hit home. That's it. That's the app. Very simple app. And again, if you're, if you're working with a car ESC, you have an option for that down here as well. And I'm sure that'll have things like braking and reverse and stuff like that. So there you go. The ZTW Bluetooth app. I told you I would go through some of the configuration options. So let's do that now. And I'm going to put the specs away and we're going to bring up a window. And that window is right here. So regarding the specifications, remember I mentioned the reverse feature that is SMR. So if you want to have servo or not servo, sorry, if you want to have ESC reversing, you can turn this SMR function on and all you have to do is connect the yellow wire to a two channel switch on your receiver or uh, 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 that's being transmitted by your radio, obviously two channel uh, on your receiver. And then you can flip that switch and that'll reverse the throttle. But it, it, they say here, it can only be effective when the throttle is below 50%. So you can't do it from a full, like, you know, you can't do like a military carrier landing, right? That, that doesn't work where you, you're full power and you're hitting the brakes at the same time. You can't do that. Uh, so you have to bring your throttle below 50%, then you can hit reverse. Uh, the brake types, off, soft, mid, and hard. I like mine off. They have auto settings for the timing, or you can program your timing to be specific. We covered motor rotation. The SR function, this is another one I'm not perfectly clear on. I talked to Rob about this one a little bit, and it seems like this synchronous rectification uh, correlates the position of your ES, your radio throttle to the driving energy on the ESC. So it's kind of like a brake without really being a brake, I guess. I just turned it off. I don't want my ESC fiddling around with my prop speed. I'll take care of that myself. <laughs> I mean, just do what the stick says, you know. So uh, the battery cells auto, that one is in case, you know, you, you have the op uh, ability to go between, what, what did I say, 6S? It's 6 to 14S, so 6 to 14S. So high voltage version. Uh, so you can set your cell count there if you want to. And then the low voltage cutoff again, 2.3. I didn't even see 2.3. So it looks like their manual needs to be updated. Maybe I just didn't scroll that low. And then for voltage cutoff, I like reduced power. I don't ever set it for cutoff power because I'd rather kill a battery and kill the plane. Uh, however, on, on an opto ESC, maybe that doesn't matter as much. Um, but yeah, you want to feed the ESC power. So anyway, I always set it for reduced power. And then again, we covered the BEC uh, settings in acceleration, normal and soft, and then startup power, low, mid, high. This is one of those areas where you might want to do a little bit of tuning when you're at the field. So startup power, I don't have a great answer on this. I'm going to be actually messing around with this because one of the things I'm trying to work out on some of the bigger planes is this concept of desyncs. So I'm trying to get rid of those and I'm reading all kinds of material. It seems like sometimes high might be the answer. Some people say low might be the answer. So we'll see. That might be a place where having a Bluetooth configuration option on an ESC would be very helpful. And that's it. That is the up and down on configuring this little Mantis. 
G2 32-bit Opto ESE with the Bluetooth configuration dongle. I think this is a pretty cool little setup, and I'll certainly be trying it out on my Extreme Flight Extra NG when we take that out to maiden it. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that subscribe button, smash the thumbs up button, and smash that notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.